And all of God's people said, Amen. say amen again. Amen. One time for the Holy Ghost. Amen. amen. Our young people are living and growing and singing. Amen. So we thank God for them. Amen. Keep up the good job. And they got some pretty voices too. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Because if some of us had to sing a cappella, boy, it would not sound good. Amen. Amen. We are in a preaching series on crazy faith. We're on a preaching series on crazy faith. And if you would stand with me, amen, we're going to be, be, excuse me, be in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 11, Hebrews 11, verse 11. When you get there, say amen. amen. If you're not there yet, say wait. I'll wait on you. If you get the revelations, you went too far. If you're still in the gospels, you ain't went far enough. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 11, there you find these words, these words recorded. By faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed, and she bore a child when she was past the age because she judged him faithful who had promised. If you don't mind, I want to use a Luther Vandross song wait for love wait for love you may be seated crazy faith last week we talked about doing something different we dealt with noah this morning we're going to deal with wait for love and we're going to wrestle around with sarah now i'm going to tell you ahead of time if you are sensitive you're going to get offended Amen, but the truth is the truth is the truth is the truth. Amen? And plus, I got some deacons that can fight, so I'm not usually scared about nothing. Amen? Y'all remember Luther, don't y'all? 1985, came out with the song, Wait for Love. Got as high as number 11 on the U.S. billboard. The part of the song that I really love, it says, get the love that I've been missing. Sometime love takes a long time, but wait for love and you're gonna get the chance to love, wait for love, wait for love, ooh. Luther, say it for me, Luther. And how many of you know that not only do we have to wait for love, but there are times in our life that God makes us wait for the promise. There are times in which God speaks the promise, but there is a time lapse between when he spoke it and when it manifests. But the secret of this and the question that all of us have to answer is, are we willing to wait? There are two premises to this series on crazy faith. First of all, first premise is you must have an intimate relationship with God through Jesus. The second premise is you must know God's voice. Wait for love, Sarah. Is that all right? One of the first things that you got to understand that if you're going to wait for love, if you're going to wait for God's promises is this. Are you going to be a lesson or are you going to be a blessing? You're going to be one of the two in someone's life. And I'm talking to some ladies now. Can y'all come close, come close, come real close. In chapter 12, there are some things that I want y'all to understand. That hey, Listen, brothers, you're going to get this, but ladies, you got to understand. First of all, y'all ready? Sarah was a lesson for some men and a blessing for one man. In the text, in the text, in the text. Sarah, y'all ready? The first time that Abraham came into contact with someone, he says to Sarah when they go to Egypt, he says, listen, tell them you are my sister. Now, he ain't lying. She is his half-sister. He said, tell them you are my sister. Why? Because I know you fine, and they're going to try to take my life. Y'all ready for this? Every lady 65 and older look at me and say, I know I'm fine. See, y'all didn't say it loud enough. Sarah was 65 
alive and fine to the point her husband has to say to her, before we come into contact with folk, say you my sister because you look so good, they'll kill me and take you. It's in the text. It's in the, it's in the text. Now listen, when he does this, Sarah goes into Pharaoh's house. Sarah goes into the house because Pharaoh's son sees her. Y'all ready? And it is a lesson. Why? Because everything went to hell in a handbasket. Ladies, you got to understand your worth and understand if you get with the wrong man, he can't handle the essence of who you are and he can't bless and be blessed because he can't handle everything God gave you. That's why when you come into contact with the wrong person, they lose their mind. They lose their sensitivity. Why? Because they can't handle what God put in you. Is there anybody here that realize the word says that he who finds a wife findeth a good thing? Ladies, you got to know you are a good thing before he finds you and if the wrong one finds you he gonna be messed up not because of him because of everything you got ladies wave at me if you don't mind and say boy I know what I'm bringing to the table and the wrong joker can't handle this he can't handle my mind he can't handle my soul he can't handle how I love he can't handle anything about me and so the wrong person it is a lesson oh fix the text fix the text see you ready when Abraham leaves Egypt, he's rich because of Sarah. It's in the text, it's in the text. Uh, Pharaoh gives him extra everything because Sarah is so fine and he can't deal with it, so he blesses Abraham because of Sarah. Now, that would have been one situation, y'all ready? Abraham did not learn his lesson and he did it again with Abimelech. He comes into contact with Abimelech, and by now, y'all ready? She's more like 85, and she's still fine. Now I understand why Mother Robinson walked with her head up. Why? If you do this thing right, you can age. Y'all, y'all want to talk to me? You can age gracefully, and you can age beautifully, that you can be 90 and still look. <laughs> uh, she's 80. 85, and yet she's still fine. And he says to her again, he said, listen, listen, listen. Don't you tell nobody you're my wife. These folks will lose their mind. And so he says, okay. He says, she says, okay, I'll, I'll be your sister again. But it didn't work the first time, but let me try it again. And listen, y'all ready? This time, the whole house becomes barren because Sarah is in their house with the wrong man. Ladies, I need to talk to all y'all that you've been with the wrong man for a long time and don't nothing work out. You with him, he can't get no job. He can't get no, uh, hello, somebody. He can't get nothing. Why? Sometimes you got to look at him and say, baby, it's not that you don't love me. It's the fact I ain't supposed to be with you. You listen, everybody who is attached to you ain't assigned to you. Priest Terrell DeMond Davis. Everybody that want to hold on to you ain't assigned to you. And you got to understand, just because they want to be with you, quit being with everybody that want to be with you. Have a standard, and if they don't meet the standard, learn how to keep on walking and without messing up his ego. Don't be tell him how sorry he is. Sometimes you'll look at him and put it on yourself, say, baby, it ain't you, it's me. <laughs> Y'all want to run him down before you leave. Look at you, old bro brother. Look at your shoes, they running over. Look. Now the brother's broken after he been with you. Just look at him and say, baby, it ain't you, it's, it's me. I'm the one who has the problem. Not you. In the back of your mind, you gotta say, I'm the problem because everything that I have, you can't hold in your vessel. Ooh, some of y'all gonna get this in a minute. Look, I made some peach cobbler the other day, but I had the wrong pan, and even though I had the right ingredients and the crust and everything else, I had too much stuff for the pan. And some of y'all ladies need to look at your neighbor and say, I got too much stuff for his pan. It wasn't that, it didn't hold stuff. It just couldn't hold my contents of what I bring to it. You either gonna be a lesson or you gonna be a blessing. And some of y'all need to look back over your little Rolodex over the last five years and say, how many folks have I been a lesson to and not a blessing? Uh-oh, uh-oh. That's all in chapter 12. Y'all still here with me? Come closer, come closer. Y'all ready? Sarah has the audacity 
to have a good intention plan to help herself. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Come on, come on, come on, Bible scholars. Come on, come on, come on. We've been reading this text all wrong because we won't read the text. We just let the preacher tell us. And the preacher has put some stuff together and has discombobulated the text. Y'all ready for this? When Sarah goes to Abram and says, go sleep with my maidservant, Hagar, it is not her trying to help God. It's a misinterpretation of the text. You ready? She is trying to help herself. The word says it this way. She says, go lay with Hagar, y'all ready, that I might get a fan. Did she didn't have God in the picture at all. In fact, she starts out with saying, God has not blessed me. I'm barren, but go into my maidservant and have a child that I might have a family. Y'all ready? She knew nothing of the promise on Abraham's life. In the text, go look at it. God speaks to Abraham, and he had not even talked about a child yet. He talks about nations, but he has not talked about blessing his seed yet. He said, I'll be a blessing to those that bless you, and I'll curse those that curse you. And this woman looks in the situation and got a good intention plan to help herself. Boy, it's, it's, look, chapter 16. Genesis 16, verse 2, y'all. And believe me, read it for yourself. Nowhere in there that she put there in God. She doing this all for herself. She want her own heirs for her own self because she know her custom is that the son will take care of the mother, and because she's married to him, they would have to take care of her. So she's all about herself. Ladies, how many of y'all that have some good intentions to help yourself? Some of y'all got some kids you raised and trying to have them to help yourself. Let me help you out. If he's sorry and you have a baby by him, he's going to still be sorry. And understand this. Don't have something trying to hold on to somebody sorry. That just means you got 18 sorry years to deal with a sorry joker because of your intended plan to help your... She had this plan, this concoction in her mind. Abraham, go have a baby with Hagar so that I can have a family. Ladies, I don't want y'all to think y'all powerless. Mm -mm, mm -mm. This is in Genesis. Boy, y'all got more power than y'all know. A whole lot of brothers in here got to testify that you got in a mess up situation because a woman had a good intention plan to help herself. Brothers don't want to say amen? Y'all not, y'all not. Y'all got quiet, huh? Yeah. There was only one man, eight, eight man out there. The rest of y'all kind of put y'all head down. Maybe y'all ain't came into contact with Shaniqua from around the way. These good intention plans, listen, to help ourselves, we got to be careful on being selfish. We got to be careful on doing things so that we feel good about ourselves. We got to be careful, you ready, of working in God's house so that somebody might send me a card and say my name. We got to be careful of giving stuff to somebody so that somebody might say thank you. Listen, whatever I do must be done as unto Christ and not as unto man if I'm going to have the right intentions. And some of y'all get mad because folks didn't say thank you and you ain't did nothing in 20 years because somebody didn't say thank you 20 years ago. And let me stop by to tell you, it ain't their fault, it was your fault because you did it for the wrong reasons. If nobody says thank you, you ought to still keep doing good. Why? Because the word says, don't grow weary in well-doing. For in due season, God will. You can't get to the blessings of God because you keep trying to be selfish with your intentions and you're expecting immediate response. I scratch your back, you scratch my back. Some of y'all got some itchy backs right now. Because that philosophy only works with other folk who understand that philosophy. But let me help you out. Pookie and Ray Ray Nim don't understand that philosophy. If God has called you to give, give. Boy, y'all should have shouted right there. Y'all. Y'all, boy, y'all ain't here no more. I'm preaching to the walls now, y'all. 
if God called you to give, give. Well, Pastor, did nobody say thank you? It don't matter. I didn't give it to you anyway. I gave it to Christ. You were the vehicle to give it to Christ. You see, whenever I put my focus on the right thing, God will take care of it when he's ready. Y'all ready for this? As long as you don't say thank you, I got a bigger thank you in heaven waiting for me. Y'all, 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 I need to talk to about 10 of y'all that understand. I give because I know what God's going to give me on the back end, and I give because God has gave me more than I'm going to give you. She... Her good intentions, her good intention plan to help herself. Y'all ready? Number three, y'all still there? Y'all still there? I told y'all this series, y'all better take notes. Y'all better take notes. Number three, be careful eavesdropping. <sighs> Boy, I'm going to mess y'all up. Y'all, y'all ain't, ain't going to like me. In chapter 18, y'all ready? God did not tell Sarah she was going to have a baby. Sarah was eavesdropping on Abraham's conversation. It's in the text. The three, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Davisology, the three that shows up have a conversation with Abraham, and the word said, and Sarah was listening at the door of the tent, eavesdropping. Be careful eavesdropping because sometimes you will hear some stuff that you ain't ready to hear quite yet. Uh-oh, sometimes your faith ain't where you think it is, and you'll hear some stuff that'll make you relapse. Y all, y all, I ain't talking about 10 of y'all that have a relapsing moment where you heard something you weren't supposed to hear, and the old you popped up in the new you, and you had to look at yourself and say, I thought I wasn't that person no more. And God sent me to say, if you wasn't eavesdropping, you wouldn't have been in that situation. You got to learn how to be sensitive to God and say, Lord, I only want to hear what you want me to hear. I'm not eavesdropping. Ladies, y'all ready for this? Don't go through that man's phone if you ain't ready to see what you might see. Shh. Every man in here should have stood up and said, hey, man, pass, I know that right. You will go through a phone and read something out of context and lose your religion, and it ain't got nothing to do with what you think it got to do with. Friend of mine, I ain't gonna say his name. Friend of mine's wife went through his phone. He was talking to someone who told him, bring me some more of that tomorrow. That's all it said. Bring me some more of that tomorrow. She read it, she screenshot it, sent it to 10 of her friends. Scheduled a Zoom call. Got on the Zoom call looking at her friends. Her friends all said the same thing. He ain't no good. He a dog. I knew he was a dog. What he trying to bring some more? Mm -hmm. They dogged that man. She put her Vaseline on her face. She took her earrings out of her hair. Her ear. She put her hair in a bun. And when she got, he got home, she started swinging at him. The moment he walked in the house, here he is getting beat up, and he don't even know why he's getting beat up. When the fight was over, he's sitting there on the floor, mad, bloody, and crying, looking at his wife, who is huffing and puffing, and she said, now tell that heifer to get some more of that. And he said, what are you talking about? And she showed him the phone, and he said, baby, I took her some sugar because she was making you a cake and didn't have no sugar and I needed to make sure the cake was right for you. Now here you didn't mess up the blessing of the secret because you eat, uh oh. And a whole lot of y'all are just as messed up as that woman trying to eavesdrop and not getting the full context. Had Sarah not been listening, she would have had her own moment with God. But instead, she ease, y'all ready for this? She eavesdrops and then laugh. Uh-oh, uh-oh. That's point number four. Don't laugh <laughs> at God. It's in the text. I ain't left the text yet. She was eavesdropping 
her. Adam, your wife Sarah is going to have a baby. And the Bible said she laughed in herself and had a conversation with herself. She said, first of all, I'm old and past childbearing age, and that would be bad enough, but the other half of this is my man is older than I am. And he's shown sure up too old to have kids. When he was of age to have kids, I sent in Hagar. It is past that time. Y'all ready? What have you laughed at God about that he told you? We have a tendency to tell God about our shortcomings. We tell God all the time, Lord, you know I don't have this, that, or the other. How am I going to do what you just said I was going to do? We are quick to tell God and to try to talk God out of our own promises. Come on, walk with me. Y'all know how we get. Y'all ever had a conversation with God and you downed yourself and God had to tell you to shut up? See, y'all don't want to be real with me. Y'all being too churchy. Come on, be real with me. You ever have a conversation with God and you start running down all your bad things, all the bad things you did, all the bad things you said, all the bad places you've been, and God tell you to shut up? Why does he say shut up? Because he said, whatever I forgave is in the sea of forgetfulness, and I don't talk about it, so I need you to shut up because I'm not going to have a conversation over something I've already for Y'all don't want to talk to me. God is not talking to you about old stuff. So y'all ready? Y'all ready? She laughed. <laughs> she laughed. Ooh, boy, 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 listen. When I use my sanctified imagination, I see her at the tent cracking up. <laughs> Shoot, he got me bent. He don't know who he talking about. I, he must be talking about Sarah from down the street. That young Sarah, that must be who, oh, oh Abraham must have been creeping with her. That must be who he, he talking about. He sure ain't talking, he sure ain't talking about me. I ain't had no kids in all these years. We done been together. We done been to five different countries. I still ain't had no kids. And now they talking about I'm going to have a kid. I didn't got to pass menopause. Menopause was 20 years ago. I am chilling in my golden years. I'm having a good time. I mean, I am chilling. How dare him say that I'm going to have a baby. He, she laughed. At God, she laughed. She laughed at. She laughed at. She laughed at God. Y'all ready? Then she lied to God. It's in the text. God says, "Hey, your wife is in there laughing," and she said, "I, I didn't laugh." And God said, "You lying." Now, some of us got to testify that your name should be Sarah because God has got to call you a liar for some things because you didn't lie to God yourself because you know you laughed, you know you doubted, you know you didn't have the faith that you should have had. And when he called you on it, you lied. Now, before I get too hard on Sarah, y'all ready for this? Sarah learned it from her husband. He laughed at God first. <laughs> it's in the text. The first time God tells him, he laughs. And he said, God, bless Ishmael. Bless Hagar's son. He laughed. See, sometimes the laughing demon, ladies, didn't get to you first. It got to your husband. That's why you got to be careful who you get yoked with. Because whatever he dealing with, it will come after. Y'all don't want to talk to me. It will come after you. That's why you got to pray him up. That's why you got to protect his heart. But that's why you got to stay prayed up. Because whatever he wrestling with, if he wins, he going to come wrestle with you. The word says, how can you take over a house unless you first bound the strong man? She, see, but I, I'm not talking about Abraham today. I'm talking about Sarah. <laughs> she laughed. She laughed at God. <laughs> I'm not having no kids, Lord, you tripping. How many of y'all been telling God he tripping? There's a business inside of you. <laughs> Lord, I can't even balance my checkbook. <laughs> you tripping. Lord, you are tripping. You going to be a speaker at church. Lord, you tripping. I don't even like talking to my family, let alone church and the microphone. You tripping. Be careful telling God he tripping 
Because here's what I learned, God trip all the time, on purpose. In fact, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. You think you laughing at God, tell him all of your plans. God will show enough laugh at you. Why? Because God said, it's not your will, but it's my will. And if you keep telling me about your will, I'll break your will to get you to my will. Don't laugh. Don't laugh at God. Some of y'all better look at me. Quit laughing. I'm not going to, ha ha, keep laughing. Number five. Don't laugh at God, but number five is this. But you will laugh with God over his blessing. I need to talk to some real folk up in here that you know God has done something supernatural for you. It wasn't by luck, it wasn't by chance, but God has done something supernatural for you. Have you ever had that moment when you look at something God has done for you and you start crying, but then you start laughing and you laugh because you know, God, you got, you are, God, you are so awesome. I, I need to talk to some real folk that every once in a while folk think you crazy, but you just thought about the blessing of God and you're crying, but you're laughing because you know God has done that thing again. Is there anybody here ever thought you was going to lose your mind, but God kept you in perfect peace and now you're laughing and crying? at the same time telling God Lord I thank you that when I should have been dead and gone you stepped in right on time and yeah I'm laughing but I'm crying at the same time I cry because I appreciate you but I laugh because it was insane how you did that is there anybody in here ever had an insane blessing how God made a way out of no way that's just crazy y'all gotta excuse me but when I think about God and what he's done in my life, I got to laugh with him because God has made my enemies my footstools and God has made a door where there was no door and opened up windows where there were no windows and when folks tried to shut it, they couldn't shut it and that's why I'm laughing with. So I'm laughing with God. Luther said, wait for love. And you're going to get your chance for love. Wait for love. Wait for I got to tell you, wait for your promise. <laughs> and you're going to get your promise. <laughs> but while you're waiting, keep on living. <laughs> you got to learn how to live and wait at the same time. That when folks look at you and say, what are you doing? You can tell them, I'm waiting on my promise, but I'm living in the moment. <laughs> That's why I praise God where I am. Because I realize God is not only a God of the promise, he's a God of the moment. Uh, there was an old church in the country. Woman grew up there. She moved. She moved to the city. She went to the city church, and you know how city church is. They had a program. They had praise and worship. They had a time for shouting and dancing. But this woman used to shout and dance when it wasn't shouting and dancing time. Boy, she shout up a storm. And one Sunday, she testified about how good the car was that God blessed her with church was over with the pastor walked out with her and she started walking down the street passed up he said listen the, the the parking lot is over here where you going she said I'm going to go catch the bus <laughs> he said lady you just shouted in there about the new car God gave you but you telling me you catching the bus is your new car in the in the in the repair shop she said no sir he said well is your new car at home somebody dropped you off she said no sir she said I ain't even got my new car. He said, well, I don't understand. How can you shout over a new car that you ain't got? She said, sir, you don't understand. I moved here 20 years ago and didn't have a job. And God gave me a job. When my children were struggling in school, I praised and prayed for God. And God straightened them out. And they all doing well. Just a few years ago, my body got sick and I was in the hospital. And I praised and prayed to God. And he healed my body. 
And I just figured uh, if God could do it then, uh, God can do it now. Uh, so I'm not waiting till I get the car. Uh, I'm going to praise him right now. Uh, they that wait on the Lord uh, shall renew their strength. Uh, they shall mount up with wings as eagles. Uh, they shall run and not get weary. Uh, they shall walk and not faint. Uh, I need to talk to about 30 of you uh, that can praise God with me uh, for what God is about to do. Uh, if he don't do it in a year, uh, I'm going to still shout. Uh, if he don't do it in five years, uh, I'm going to still shout. Because uh, whatever God said, uh, God will uh, bring it to pass. Uh, thank you, Sarah. Uh, and thank you, Luther. Uh, I'm going to wait for my promise. Uh, I'm going to get my chance. Uh, is there anybody here? Uh, don't wait till the battle's over. Uh, shout now. Uh, shout till they put you out of church. Uh, shout till they don't want to sit with you. Uh, shout till they talk about you. Uh, and when they ask you, uh, what you shouting about? Uh, tell them Jesus uh, is still on the main line. Uh, tell him uh, what you want. Uh, is there anybody here? Uh, talk about me. Uh, it means I'm shouting right. Uh, don't sit next to me. Uh, it means I'm shouting right. Uh, I'm just trying uh, to get that prayer wheel turning. Is there anybody here uh, that knows praise and worship uh, is opposite? Uh, I worship uh, and then I praise him. Uh, I worship him uh, because of who he is. Uh, I worship him uh, because of who he is. Uh, then I praise him uh, for the stuff he did, uh, the stuff he's doing, uh, and the stuff uh, he will. She said, Reverend, you don't understand. I'm not going to wait until I get the car. I'm going to praise him right now. <laughs> Because what he's taught me is this. If I praise him now, he'll bless me later. Y'all get this in a minute. If I know him now, he'll make himself plain later. It just takes my faith. It takes my faith to unlock the door. Sarah didn't do everything right. But after that tent experience, when the man said, you're lying, this preacher just believes she changed her focus. If you can know I'm laughing on the inside and you can know I'm lying on the inside, then surely you can manifest this thing on the outside. <laughs> and the word said, a year later, they came to the house. She carrying a baby with her old fine self. A year later, I believe she laughing with God. <laughs> Tell somebody to bring my Geritol uh, while I breastfeed this baby uh, that nobody believed I was going to have. Uh, go ahead and look at my gray hair if you want to. Uh, I still trust God. Uh, and God is a promise keeper. And whatever he said, he will. He will bring it to pass. Crazy faith to believe that even though my balance sheet say I shouldn't have no money at the end of the month, I still tithe and God has made it so that I got more than enough. Y'all don't want to talk to me. Crazy faith that whatever God said, and though the vision tarries, wait on it. Though the vision Terrors, though it's delayed, so though it's slow and coming, wait on it. I know you don't believe that God will turn your mourning into dancing, but some of us can testify. It may not have happened one month after mama died, but one day I woke up and joy, hey, joy was in my heart. I don't know when it happened, but I can tell you that it happened. That's what it means when it says, though it tarries, wait on it. Whatever he promised is going to come to pass, wait on it. I know 
I know your child don't look like much now. I know they're getting in trouble now. But if God say they're going to be somebody, you just got to wait on it. You, you just got to walk your house and pray about it and speak it to them in the name of Jesus. I, I know you got in school tomorrow, but there's going to come a day you're going to make the honor roll in Jesus' name. I know there's a D on this paper, but in the name of Jesus, I'm signing it. But I'm going to put a B on the other side because I know God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above anything. Though it tears, wait on it. I'm, I'm trying to close. But can I be real with y'all? I used to tear Cameron's butt up. Some of y'all have been in meetings. Sister Williams is back there. I whoop Cameron a lot, but Reverend Williams saved Cameron probably half of the whoopings he should have got advocating on his behalf. But I was whooping him because I felt like he had potential in him. And God told me he was going to make it. God told me he was going to be all right. But somewhere along the way, I said, God, I ain't seen no evidence. He don't, he don't like school. In fact, if given the chance, he ain't going to go to school. And if he ain't careful, he might run away from school. And so here it is, I'm whooping him, and God's saying, but do you trust what I said? Cameron, can't you just get some A's and B's? God is saying, can you trust what I said? But Lord, I want him to get A's and B's because I got A's and B's, and God said, this ain't about you. This is about me and him. And can you trust me with him? You gave him to me. Do you trust me with him? When junior came. I mean, he passed him by the skin of his teeth. I mean, look at his gray card. It's just C's and D's everywhere. And never more than one D, but it was a whole lot of C's in there. I thought he was a crip for a long time. Just sees. Senior came. COVID hit. Dad gummy. He ain't go to school. He started getting A's and B's. Lord, how in the world he getting A's and B's in the middle of a pandemic? Ain't going to school and he got C's when he was there every day. And God kept saying, Do you trust me with him? Do you trust me? He kept going back to the same question. Do you trust me with him? He goes off and he's in the military and he's doing all that. And every phone call, he's more and more excited. He's more and more academic. And I'm looking at God saying, how is this thing to be? He didn't do any of that when he was school in school. And God said, do you trust me with him? Because if you trust me what I promise, then all you got to do is wait on it. And when he came back and said, Daddy, my first purchase was a laptop. I'm like, why? He said, because we got to do book reports. And I want to make sure my book reports are good. And we got to read three books every year. He is now more academic now. But it didn't look like I, the way I wanted it to look. And now I know what Sarah meant. It would have been all right if she had a baby at 65, but it didn't look right to have it as old as she was. But God says, do you trust me <laughs> with the promise? If you trust me with the promise, just have faith. Listen, we keep asking God to paint in one of them paint-by-number books. And God keeps looking at us saying, give me a blank canvas. Because I don't paint by numbers. I make masterpieces where there was nothing so that you know it was only my, y'all don't want to talk with me. It was only my hand. As long as I'm painting by numbers, whoever designed the numbers designed it. But God said, give me a blank master, a blank sheet of paper. And there's some of us in there, we can testify, boy, our life has been a blank. <laughs> A blank canvas. But won't God 
paint a masterpiece. Where folks gave up on us, won't God do something? God has a way of taking a stop sign and making it something different. He has a way of making a blemish, a new sun. God has a way of doing some things that when he's finished, you can't even tell where the mess, y'all don't want to talk to me. You can't even tell where the mess ups happen. It takes us testifying where the mess ups happen for folks to see it. But we just know God touched us. Crazy faith to wait for your promise. Even when your promise doesn't explain your circumstances. Thank you, God. For being more than enough to overcome my criteria, my training, and my skill set. How many of you right now walking in some promises that you know you don't deserve? Listen, if you don't mind, stand up with me. If you're walking in some promises that you know you don't deserve. Now look around and start pointing to folk and tell them, you got promise too? You, you, you. You walking in promise too? Boy, that, see, that's what, this is what blows our mind. When you start looking at other folks saying, you got promise too? And God made it for you too? And God is not done promising. It's all about where is your faith? And can you hear his voice? While we're standing, I extend to you the greatest invitation known to man. A relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This whole series, the first premise is that you got to be in relationship with him.